good day, dear enthusiasts. It's been a while since my last video upload. Nice to share lessons again with you guys. For today's session, we'll take up how to make research abstract. An abstract summarizes research, scientific, and academic paper. The abstract reviews such works at the beginning. This helps leaders and researchers discover what they need and grasp the topic's scope. An abstract, like a movie trailer, may stimulate curiosity in your work. Abstracts organize people and attract readers. When writing an abstract, it is important to understand its prerequisites. For today's video, Teacher Anne will give you the fundamentals of abstract writing. Purposes of Abstract Abstracts help readers decide whether to read the full academic work or not. After all, titles sometimes mislead and fail to provide essential background information such as resource procedures and findings. Abstracts boost grant proposal funding. If you lack financing for your study, your abstract will describe the project's costs and advantages. So, potential investors could make an informed choice or go straight to the section of your proposal that has the information they need. Abstracts serve as excellent indexing tools. Scholars can find relevant papers faster using this than by reading multiple publications. Because abstracts sometimes provide results that researchers and students can rapidly assess if the publication may be used as proof or as a patient to support their thesis. Abstracts are vital for search engine optimization or SEO. Getting digital copies of your publication to appear in search engine results. If someone Googles your abstract's keywords, your paper's link will rank higher in search results, increasing its clicks. How long should an abstract be? Abstracts generally consist of 100 to 250 words and one or two paragraphs. Complex papers require detailed abstracts. Therefore, you may need to expand it to cover everything. Scientific abstracts often fill page. Abstracts are classified into two types, informative and descriptive. Most abstracts fall into the informative category. Descriptive abstracts are reserved for less formal papers. Informative abstracts cover all of your paper's essentials, purpose, method, scope, findings, and conclusion. Scientific papers use them. Useful abstracts try to summarize the paper. They are written for speed and efficiency. Descriptive abstracts are more personal and aimed at engaging readers. They are less concerned with facts and specifics and instead read more like overviews that don't reveal too much. Descriptive abstracts are shorter than informative abstracts, closer to 100 words, and can be written in a single paragraph. They specifically do not address areas such as findings or conclusion. You must read the whole research to satisfy your interests. Abstracts should include all of the IMRAD elements, introduction, methods, results, and discussion. Introduction Like the thesis statement, the beginning of your abstract should give a broad overview of the whole paper. You can also write your hypothesis or research question in this part of your abstract. In the first sentence or two, you should say what your paper is about, such as what problem it is trying to solve and why the reader should care. Methods this section talks about how you did your research or how you got the information. This is very important if you want to check the credibility of your paper. You should explain how you analyze the data you collected 
including details about the instruments and people who took part. Results It is acceptable to reveal the ending in informative abstracts. Summarize your paper's findings and conclusion in one or two sentences. Note that the objective of most abstracts is to enlighten rather than attract. So discussing your results here might assist others in properly classifying and categorizing your paper. This is often the largest piece of your abstract. It contains most of the concrete facts about your paper, so don't hesitate to give it an extra sentence or two in comparison to the others. Discussion This section describes the final results and its implications. Given the data and analysis, what conclusions can we draw from this paper? Frequently, the discussion part goes beyond the scope of the paper itself to address the significance of the study or what it contributes to the field as a whole. Abstract Format the American Psychological Association, or APA, has specific guidelines for their papers in the interest of consistency. Here's what the 7th edition publication manual has to say about formatting abstracts. Double space your text. Set page margin at 1 inch. Write the word abstract at the top of the page, centered and in bold font. Don't indent the first line. Keep your abstract under 250 words. Include a running header and page numbers on all pages including the abstract. Abstract keywords have their particular guidelines as well. Label the section as keywords with italics. Indent the first line at 0.5 inches but leave subsequent lines as is. Write your keywords on the same line as the label. Use lowercase letters. Use commas, but not conjunctions. Tips in writing abstract. Abstract is intended to be self-sufficient independent composition. They should be able to stand on their own and they should usually have a beginning, middle, and end. The idea is that even if you don't read the paper, the abstract will tell you everything you need to know about the paper. When you're writing your abstract, keep this in mind. It should be a summary of the whole paper with all the key points but none of the details. Writing the abstract last is best. Writing the abstract first is tempting. Writing will reveal new meanings and maybe change the framework. After finishing the main paper, you may write the abstract better. Abstracts are not introductions. People often think that the abstract should be written like an introduction since it's at the first part of the paper. But abstracts have different set of rules to follow, so don't do this. Let's see the difference between abstract and introduction. Abstracts are short summaries that are meant to highlight the most important parts of your paper and make it easier to organize and find. The purpose of the introduction is to slowly bring the reader up to speed on the subject. A good abstract has information about the background and context as well as the results and conclusions. The goal of introduction, on the other hand, is less scientific and more personal, leaving room for explanation and building up excitement. Abstract can also be read on its own without reading the rest of the paper. While introduction is an important part of the paper, and reading one without the other makes the paper feel incomplete. Enjoy writing your abstract, guys! For today's words of wisdom, 
The secret of making progress is to get started. That's according to Mark Twain. Word of the day, gingerly, which means to move in a way that is careful and cautious. Used in the sentence, holding her painful back, she sat down gingerly on the bench. See you in my next video!